Thank you for listening. I am Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss 21, with Chicago's number one underground comedian, Apollo Taj Mahal. We appreciate it, guys. If you like the interview, and I know you will, be sure to go ahead and listen to the full episode. You can find it on our website, didyousseethatshit.com, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, pretty much wherever you find your favorite podcast. Be sure to listen to the whole episode. We appreciate it very much, guys. I want to welcome Zach Otto to the show. Zach is a well-known UFC fighter, and I'm um, looking forward to uh, big things from Zach this year. What's going on, brother? Uh, not much, man. Just got done with one training session and uh, about to have another in a little bit. So, you know, just plugging away, getting ready here. Awesome, man. Uh, you know, how how's camp been going, man? You're one of those guys that you don't talk a lot of shit in the media, which uh, is very commendable, but you're always working. You're always working to improve. How is camp going, man? Uh, good. You know, I'm a coach as well, so I'm always in the gym. The fight came up um, a little bit of a shorter notice than like a normal fight camp, you know, which would be like six to eight weeks. Um, I found out about this fight about three and a half weeks out. Um but, you know, I've, I've been training and my weight was good and I really liked the matchup. So, uh, you know, just kind of turned up the, the frequency and intensity of the workouts and watched my diet a little bit more and, you know, we're all set to go. You mentioned you like the matchup. What about this contest that you were like, you know what, yes, this is, this is the fight I want? Uh, well, you know, I've been a fan of Mike Pyle for a while. been watching him, you know, since I started training MMA. Legend, um, yeah. Yeah one of the first guys I think in the division to be real well-rounded, uh, you know, back when a lot of people were still one dimensional. So, um, you know, he had been losing a couple lately, which he had dropped from the rankings and, you know, I'm kind of on my way up and, um, I just thought our paths could possibly meet and that'd be a pretty cool opportunity to get a chance to fight him. Yeah. Mike is a guy that he, I don't think he's ever put a boring fight on. So that's definitely going to be an exciting fight. You know, you mentioned that you're coaching a lot nowadays. How do you find time to get your training in and coach or do you just, do you kind of do it all in the same nutshell? Um, well, I have a business partner, Jake clip that I own the gym with. And, um, you know, when I, I get a fight that's come up, um, I, I teach you know way less classes and the other coaching staff and and Jake and stuff kind of pick up around here with um, the the coaching and stuff like that. But then when I don't have a fight coming up, you know the coaching really allows me to work on the mental side of the game and and always stay involved with MMA and keep you know staying on top of like learning new techniques and stuff like that. So I don't get I don't fall into that trap where I'm just kind of stuck doing the same thing from fight to fight. I'm always uh, you know growing and. And we have different fighters on our team, all different weight classes, different sizes. So there's different, you know, styles that I need to be familiar with so that I can help coach them according to kind of like what their anatomy is and, and, you know, what works for them. So I think it really helps with the mental side of of uh, what I do, you know, when I'm in between fights. Let me ask you, man, what's your favorite discipline to train? Like if uh, if you didn't have to worry about money financially, like if that was just you, you know, you had as much money as you needed, if you could do whatever you wanted to do, what discipline would you just train just for shits because you love it? Uh, I really like doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, that was kind of what I started with when I started doing MMA training. I wrestled and stuff in high school. You know, wrestling's pretty grueling. Um, and then I do really enjoy the striking aspect, but I don't, I, I don't plan on, you know, sparring and getting hit in the head you know, for the rest of my life. So um, I do, after I'm done with MMA competition, I would like to really focus in on uh, jujitsu competitions. Nice. Yeah, jujitsu, man, I feel like uh, that is kind of just now getting its groove, you know, with Polaris and uh, EBI. It's, you know, I feel like there's a, an avenue now that existed that didn't exist just a few years ago, you know, for jujitsu guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's only going to continue to grow and get bigger now that we're getting more and more kids involved in jujitsu and they're growing up with it, you know, uh, back when I kind of started, it kind of seemed like everybody was an adult that was starting. And now, I mean, our kids program is, is growing, you know, month to month and much more kids are getting exposed to these kind of combat sports. Yeah. I think uh, martial arts and, and kids is a very good mixture. Well, let me ask you, Zach, what's something that, uh, people would be surprised to find out about Zach Otto? 
Um, well, I had quite a bit of career changes uh, coming up before I got into this. Um, I, from high school, uh, you know, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I got accepted to the Air Force Academy. Um, I played football for them. Uh, for uh, I went to the Air Force Academy for two years. Um, kind of used some connections from there to get a job uh, working as an assistant for a stockbroker out in New York City. So then I went from Colorado, moved to New York City, lived out there. I pretty much was like homeless, just couch surfing from friend to friend uh, for like a year until my bank account pretty much ran out. And then I came back home and I was going to finish up at, uh, you know, just like a state school here in Milwaukee. And that's when I found jujitsu. So I always done well in school, but I, you know, I, I knew I was going to do something, uh, you know, and, and be successful. I just didn't know what it was going to be. And, uh, you know, of course I always want to be a professional athlete and well, along with running the gym and, and running a business and stuff, it's something I really like to do too. So I kind of get the best of both worlds and, uh, I couldn't be happier where, you know, where life's kind of ended up right now. Yeah. That's so cool, man. So, uh, what gym did you discover jujitsu at? I started at Matamoros Jiu Jitsu. Uh, Henry Matamoros is um, my instructor, and he was the first Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt from the state of Wisconsin. Really? Um, he was kind of one of the founders, um, you know, from in the mid '90s, putting mats in his basement and having some of the some guys over to just try to find whatever information they could to uh, to practice the techniques and stuff like that when Jiu Jitsu first came on the scene ended up opening up a gym and then uh you know fighting professionally himself and stuff and then by the time i started like in 2009 um you know he had been retired from fighting but was a black belt and then um he moved out of state and took a took a job um out of state and then pretty much passed down the gym to to jake and myself Man, that's so cool. I love hearing the, the origin stories about how how you and how other elite fighters, how you guys find the sport. And more times than not, it's, I don't want to say, you know, it's life-changing, but almost, right? You know, I mean, a lot of a lot of times, you know, it's it's almost life-changing for you guys finding jiu-jitsu and martial arts. It's very cool, man. Very cool. That's a great story. And thank you for uh, your, your service, too. I got to bust your balls a little bit, man. Are you a Packers fan? Yeah, Packers fan. I'm a Bears fan. We're in Chicago okay. here. I can't really even bust your balls because we don't even have a team here. At least you guys win. Do you <laughs> well, still? Well, we don't have much of a team if without Aaron Rodgers. We pretty much saw that when he got hurt for the majority of the year this year. And I mean, we're 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 pretty much just the Cleveland Browns, but with uh, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> it's an interesting way of looking at it. You know, you could argue that Aaron Rodgers could have won the most valuable player last year because look how valuable he is to his team. When he right. when he goes out, yeah, man. without him, I mean, yeah, they did a bunch of firing and management, and everybody's pretty happy about that around here. Very cool, man. Uh, if you weren't a professional fighter, what sport would you uh, would you try to play? Um, I probably, um, I mean, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I guess. Um, I mean, you know, I I played baseball at a high level growing up, and then that kind of turned into football, you know. And I played some football in college. I was uh, in high school, uh, all state linebacker, um, so. But I was just a little too small to play at anything real, you know, NFL or anything. Um, I mean, obviously, if I could, I, I would. But realistically, um, I, you know, I've been there. I've been through the whole progress of pretty much reaching my potential in those other sports. So I'd have to say just, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, some form of grappling. If everything goes perfect, how many times would you like to fight this year? Uh, three times would be great. Um I'm getting one in here, you know, if I can come out uh, healthy and get on that June card that's in Chicago, which is, you know, yeah. super close to us. Hell yeah. That'd be awesome. I know a lot of friends and family that have been wanting to come and watch, uh, you know, a UFC fight with me in it. And a lot of people are making that trip out to Las Vegas. But before that, I was out of the country, you know, three times in a row. So uh, if I could fight close to home, that would be awesome. And then that's only June. So, you know, I could get a third one in before the end of the year. Sounds like a good plan, and uh, you know, to me, that's the least they can do. You know, throw you a bone, like you said, man. You know, you know, you just fought three fights out of the country. You know, us here in Chicago, uh, all, all kidding aside about the Packers joke, but you know, we love our fighters here, and uh, we love to watch you fight because you're an exciting fighter, and I'd love to have you on that Chicago card, man. And I'm sure all the fans would here too. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? 
just appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, you know, if you guys are listening, just follow me on social media. Um, I'm on Facebook and uh, Instagram under my name, Zach Otto. And then I have a Twitter handle at the Barbarian MMA. Well, man, I appreciate your time. Could you do me a quick favor? We kind of have a tradition here. Could you say this is Zach Otto and you're listening to the Did You See That Shit podcast? Sure. This is Zach Otto and you are listening to Did You See That Shit podcast. I appreciate it so much, brother. Good luck in your fight and I hope I get to see you in Chicago. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Zach. All right. See you. <laughs>